Hi, I'm Greg. Welcome to Affect Studio and welcome to part two of my comparison of Kemper effects to effect pedals. Let's start with the drives. These are one of the few things Kemper actually has specific models of. I sold most of my drives after developing the Sunday driver and peanut butter pedals, but still own some of the ones they've modeled. So obviously I have good taste or maybe they do or we both do. Uh, let's start with my old Distortion Plus. This one's from the early 70s, and as far as I can tell, it's never actually had any silkscreen letters on it. I uh, don't know what that means, if it's a prototype or just they really did completely wear off. But um, this one's got germanium diodes, whereas I think most of them have silicon, so it probably will sound a little different. Okay, over to the Kemper. Okay, so I started on the middle leg, that's where the Kemper was on the drive. So you got more noise. All right, well, so that sounds pretty good and it sounds pretty close and pretty noisy. Let's try my rat. Not my oldest drive, but it's one I've owned longest. I bought this new in about 87. It was my second drive pedal. I had a super tube before that, which is a pretty rare pedal, which was never that great. And so I was looking for a pedal that sounded like my amp was cranked up full, and this was a pretty good substitute at that point. That's why I used to run it. In fact, you can just faintly still see paint marks on it from my default settings. Okay, so here's the Kemper version, which I've tried to match up. The Kemper's tone control works like a regular one, so turning it up goes brighter, whereas on the Rat, it's a reverse of that. All right, let's see what it sounds like if we turn them way up. Once again, I think that sounds pretty close and pretty impressive. My TS9 Tube Screamer, this one's from 83, has a JRC4558 chip that everyone loves. Uh, so let's see how it compares. Quite close. One of the things with all these pedals is that pots are never exactly the same. The tolerance of pots is plus or minus 20%, which is quite extreme when you think about it. So two pots set at the same value could be off by you know 40% in extreme cases. Um, now one thing I note is that the Kemper drives are much, much quieter. So if you're looking for um, you know noise-free, that's definitely an advantage there. But overall, I gotta say they sound pretty amazing. One of the reasons for doing these comparisons is that I realised I missed using my pedal board. I think there are a few reasons for that. For me, the Kemper's strength is in getting a great mic'd amp tone. 
It excels in this regard, assuming the amp was mic'd well when profiling. I know a lot of people love using it through a cab, and I did buy the powered version in Kemper cab, planning to use it that way. My experience is that the Kemper isn't as good by itself as a substitute for an amp through a speaker. Yes, I am using merge profiles. Playing in a room where the band isn't mic'd or the PA is just being used for a little bit of reinforcement, I prefer playing through my amps and pedals. I've done this a few times in the past year and found it to be way more satisfying. Now some of that is not having to use in-ears, which have their advantages but never sound as good. They also make it hard to judge tone, dynamics or get enough separation from the other musicians. Nothing beats a nice amp behind you with each player coming from a unique location on the stage or in the room. Ignoring any sonic differences for a moment, I find having the pedals easier simply because you can see exactly what you're engaging or disengaging rather than needing to remember what you've assigned the buttons on the Kemper remote or profiler to. It's way more immediate, don't need to think so much as just reach for the knob you need to adjust or hit the switch. I chose the toaster over the rack due to the effects control knobs on it, but don't find them as useful as I expected. The different colour LEDs in the remote or profiler also only help to a point. You still need to remember what they are. Very different to looking down and seeing a physical pedal. I love the convenience of having your Kemper with the remote and only needing a single cable from the toaster to the remote. Not needing to connect multiple leads and run power to my pedal board, along with needing to make sure the amp is mic'd well, makes setup much quicker and simpler. I also don't need to get down on the floor to make adjustments. So there's good and bad. So even if the Kemper effects do sound as good, the pedal still might make life easier and more enjoyable. No matter what, I'll still be using the Kemper for the amp profiles when going through PA. I love phasers and think they're second only to drive pedals for the number I've owned over the years. I don't use them as much as I'd like, as I worry they'll be too much. Not that anybody has ever complained. Actually no, one person did complain. I was once mixing a track that had been recorded, and someone was coming in to supervise a mix, which was a bit silly in the first place. Um, and they heard the track that the guitarist had done using my Phase 90, and straight away and went, all right, turn that effect off. And we said, we can't, it's been recorded that way. And they said, all right, we'll turn that part right down. And we're going, it's a hook of the song. Anyway, we remixed the song when this person wasn't there. And that's when it's on the album and no one's ever noticed. And the uh, phase 90 sounds great. So that's the only time anyone's ever complained about a phaser. But I think I sometimes worried that people are going to think it's too much. Anyway, so here is a phase 90. So mine's pretty dirty, really. So I set that on the Eddy preset, knowing that Mr. Van Halen used to use a Phase 90, and I had to turn the mix up, because it was a bit subtle. And that does sound good, it's certainly a lot cleaner. I picked this one up on sale late last year and it's the cutest thing ever and it sounds just as good as the original although cleaner. Now that's on the script logo setting here, which is the version I believe Eddie was supposed to have used. And also does a phase 45, which is a two stage phase. Kemper has a two-stage setting. Yeah, so Kemper's a bit subtler, which could be good for some things. I'm going to go to my Boss PH1R phaser. My first two phasers were a PH1R and a PH1. I bought the same day at the same pawnbrokers for a very good price and stupidly sold those a few years later when I got an MXR Phase 100, which I then stupidly sold a bit later when I got my Phase 90. But um, the Boss is quite different to the others and I got this one more recently. I 
mean, it's not completely different, but it has some different stuff, and the resonance control makes a difference. <laughs> So I just can't get this to sound quite the same. So the Kemper faces are good, but I definitely prefer the pedals. All of them, um, the Face 95, that little one is my current favourite. Now, all the pedals sound grittier and have extra depth to them that um, the, you know, the Kemper version just is lacking. It's a lot more polite, which could be good for some things. And um, if you've got someone breathing in your neck saying less of that effect, it's a good option. And in fact, with most of the Kemper effects, they have a mix control so you can blend in some of the direct signal in parallel. The effects loop has a blend control too, although there's only one loop on the rack and toaster, so if you're running multiple pedals through it, you probably won't want them all running in parallel. Chorus. I love chorus, but really like to hear it too obviously, probably because I grew up in the 80s and it was so often overdone. I owned a Boss C1 for a number of years, which I liked, but found was often too syrupy for my tastes. It was used for some great sounding parts by some of my clients, and um, I also used it myself for some recordings and live a few times. But in general, I preferred my CE2, which has been on my board for almost 30 years. It's just a bit subtler and more manageable. One of the things I'm noticing with these analog pedals is they're never completely clean. I noticed that with the flanger when I was doing the first video, there's a little bit of grit to it, a little bit of dirt, which just seemed to add a little bit of extra sort of something to it. And I don't know if that's part of the reason why they seem to sound more interesting, um, but otherwise the chorus is pretty good and it's pretty close. My first chorus pedal was this Ibanez SC10, bought around 87 or 88. It's come and gone as far as the amount of use it's had. That's a very different sound to the Boss, and I don't think the Kemp is going to get close to this. Yeah, really not the same at all there, and I've tried their other chorus options, and none of them really match that, which is okay. Sometimes I love that pedal, sometimes I don't. Lastly, I have my True Tone H2O, which can be a little hard to dial in at times, as there are just so many options and variables you can go with. Similar, but there are a lot more sounds you can get out of the H2O that the Kemper just can't match. Um, but it still sounds pretty good, and um, certainly it's once again cleaner than the H2O, which is interesting. While the H2O is out, what about a bit of vibrato? <laughs> Well, the Kemper Vibrato is a clear winner for me there. 
As with our chorus, it's much easier to use, way too many variables in the H2O, and I need to admit, I've never actually found a vibrato setting I liked on the H2O, just thought I should try it again because I could. So this is the end of part two. It's been an interesting comparison for me and not the results I was expecting. At the moment, I think I'm going to try using a mixture of my pedal board and the inbuilt effects until I get tired of bringing the board and return to just using the Kemper and the remote. If I didn't own these pedals, I wouldn't be rushing out to buy them as the Kemper sounds really good. While I think the modulation pedals in particular sound better, the main reason for using the board is not having to think about what I'm switching on or off so I can concentrate more on playing rather than remembering what's assigned where. So thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.